we've explored AWS's history in a previous video that I've linked up here, and also in the description. That history explains why they structure the services as basic building blocks that function together in a very decoupled way via a robust and well-documented API. This architecture is both the reason why AWS were able to capture such a large part of the market, and what gave me such a culture shock when I started using AWS in 2010. The seven essential AWS services that we're about to explore are also the first and most fundamental building blocks, those that best embody that philosophy. Understanding how these services work is key to effectively running workloads on AWS. After all, as the Stack Overflow survey shows, AWS is the dominant platform in software engineering online, and you can't afford to ignore how to use it. As we explore then these seven key services, you'll see how applying AWS's philosophy and tenants translates into tools that can transform your development process. It's not just about the tech, it's about the mindset and the philosophy. Let's dive in. Now, let's talk about the cornerstone of AWS and the first service they launched, S3 or Simple Storage Service. S3 was launched in March 2006 and it hit the ground running. On its first day, it attracted 12,000 developers. Why? Because it solved a fundamental problem in a revolutionary way. S3 introduced object storage. Unlike traditional file systems with their complex structures, S3 lets you store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere on the web. It's like having an infinitely expandable hard drive that you can access from any device anywhere in the world. But S3 isn't just about storage, it's a Swiss army knife for web developers. If you need to host a static website, S3 can do that for you. Do you need an app that can handle tons of user-generated content, like images and videos? S3 has got you covered. What sets S3 apart is its scalability and durability. As data is replicated across multiple facilities, you can rest easy knowing that your information is safe and always reliable. Now that we've explored how S3 revolutionized storage, let's go to computing power. What if you could run any application at any scale without ever worrying about the underlying architecture? This isn't just possible, it's been the backbone of counter startups and tech giants starting in 2006. This is where EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud steps in. EC2 was the second service that AWS launched. EC2 is how AWS provides flexible computing power with scalability and resizable virtual machines. The beauty of EC2 is in its customization. Whether you're building a small web app or a large scale system, you can tailor your instances to meet your specific needs. This flexibility is what makes EC2 a game changer for developers. And coupled with Elastic Beanstalk, you can scale your infrastructure up and down to meet demand. But what if you could do away with infrastructure altogether? That's where Lambda steps in. Lambda extends to computing the concepts that S3 introduced of scalable storage that abstracts away the underlying infrastructure. The Lambda service is the start of a new concept, serverless computing. Lambda allows you to run code without provisioning or managing servers. It's a paradigm shift that lets you focus on writing code rather than worrying about infrastructure. But how does it work? Lambda functions are short-lived, stateless pieces of code that run in containers which are booted up when events are triggered and shut down when they're no longer needed. These events can be anything from an HTTP request to a file upload in S3. When an event triggers your function, Lambda spins up the container, executes your codes and then shuts it down you only pay for the milliseconds that your code actually runs. This offers significant advantages. First, it's incredibly scalable. Lambdas can handle anything from a few requests per day to thousands of seconds without breaking your code. Second, it's cost-effective. Unlike traditional servers that run 24-7, you only pay for the compute time that you actually use. Now, of course, if you have a regular stream of activity, Lambda might not be cost-effective, but there are plenty of good use cases for Lambda. For example, I use it to dynamically convert and resize images to optimize the experience for our users. When the converted or resized image already exists on S3, the code isn't executed. But if the file isn't found, the Lambda code generates the image, stores it on S3, and then sends it to the requesting user. That code is actually triggered by CloudFront, the content distribution service. We'll get to that later. First, let's talk about routing traffic. Route 53 is AWS's scalable domain name system, or DNS. But Route 53 does much more than simple DNS lookups. Route 53 superpower 
is its seamless integration with other AWS services. DNS failover, for example, means that if one of your endpoints goes down, Route 53 can automatically redirect traffic to a healthy resource. Then there's geo-routing. This feature allows you to route users to the closest server based on their geographic location. Now that we've got our traffic flowing smoothly, let's talk about where that data ends up. RDS, or Relational Database Services, is AWS's solution for managed databases. The operative word here is managed. It's like having a virtual DBA team that handles all the nitty gritty of database administration so that you can focus on what really matters, the architecture of your data, to have it best fit your specific business needs. RDS takes care of all the routine database tasks like backup and patch management and replication. This means you spend less time worrying about database maintenance and more time coding. And RDS offers high availability options, making sure your data is always accessible when you need it. One of the coolest things about RDS is its support for multiple database engines. Whether you're a fan of MySQL, Postgres, or even for some strange reason of SQL Server, RDS has got you covered. This flexibility allows you to choose the right tool for your specific needs. In my experience, migrating from a self-hosted database to RDS was a game changer. Sure, there were challenges. Data transfer took some planning, and we had to ensure compatibility with our existing apps, but the payoff was worth it. Now, while RDS takes care of your data storage needs, there's another piece of the puzzle that's crucial for delivering that data to users quickly and efficiently. Imagine if you could clone your website and place a copy of it in every major city worldwide. That's what CloudFront offers, AWS's Content Delivery Network, or CDN. It's a global network of high-speed servers that replicate your static data at edge locations around the world. When a user requests the data from your website, they're served from the nearest location. CloudFront's strength is in its seamless integration with other AWS services, in particular S3 and Lambda. I store my static assets in S3 and I use CloudFront to distribute it globally. Setting up CloudFront is not the most user-friendly experience but it's simple if you persevere. As I mentioned, you can couple it with Lambda to create an image resizing service. I've also used it to serve static Next.js websites from S3. Let me know if you're interested in learning more about how to do that. Now, while CloudFront speeds up content delivery, there's still one major bottleneck that can slow down even the most optimized web apps. In fact, invariably, when the website I'm working on can't keep up with the traffic, it's usually because I've forgotten to correctly use the service, namely the cache. Elastic Cache is AWS's in-memory data store and cache service. What is a cache and how does it work? Well, the cache is a very fast in-memory key value database. You store computationally heavy information in there. And when a request comes in that needs that info, you start by checking to see if it's available in the cache. This significantly decreases response time and the load on your database. And it means that your app can handle more requests without breaking a sweat. For me, correctly implementing the cache has been the difference between having a functional website or having a blank error page. Now we've explored these seven key services, each embodying the philosophy of independence and interconnectivity, each designed as a basic building block to enable developers to build exciting new things. This approach has revolutionized web development and it's now become the de facto standard among other cloud providers. But to truly understand how to get the most out of these AWS services, you need to understand the origin story, the underlying philosophy, the tenets that defined how and why AWS was built this way, which you can understand thanks to this video here.